Number 28. Consider a large number of hydrogen atoms with electrons randomly distributed in the n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4 orbits. Letter A. How many different wavelengths of light are emitted by these atoms as the electrons fall into lower energy orbitals? So we just have to find the, the complete amount of different wavelengths that can occur when electrons fall into lower energy orbitals. So this will help us out greatly if we draw a picture. So over here I have my nucleus, right? And then they want n from 1 to 4, so that means that I should have four shells surrounding the nucleus. So here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now let me, let's see if I could just bring this a little bit down. Oh, perfect. Okay, so this is the nucleus and this is hydrogen. And now we have n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 4. And we're going from lower energy, right? So I have to start high and go low. So let's start from, I guess, the largest to the smallest. So let's just say that we have an electron that's going from n equals 4 all the way down to n equals 1. So I have an electron from here going all the way down to n equals 1. Now, there's a couple of things that can happen, right? It can jump from all the way from n equals 4 to n equals 1. However, it could stop along the way. And each stop will equate to a different wavelength because each stop will have a different amount of energy that is needed. And with the different amount of energy comes a different wavelength. So it could go from all the way from, we'll just say, 4 to 1. It could stop at 4 to 2, right? And then it would stop right here. Or it could go from 4 to 3. All of these would be a different wavelength. So right off the bat, from just going from 4 to 1, you have three different wavelengths. And wavelength is lambda, so I'm just going to put that there. Now, let's talk about from 3 to 1. So we did 4 to 1. So now we got to do 3 to 1, and then finally 2 to 1. So from 3 to 1, electron would start here, and we're going lower, so we're going all the way down. So from n equals 3 all the way to n equals 1. Well, it could go all the way. It could jump from 3 to 1, or it can make a stop at n equals 2. So I can go from 3 to 2 and get a discrete energy. And I also can go from 3 all the way to 1 and get a discrete energy, right? This is what it means when they say that energy of an electron is quantized. So you can get different discrete energy levels depending on what jumps you do. So in this case, you have two different wavelengths. The last but not least, we have to just do n equals 2 to n equals 1. So now I'm starting over here. And I'm just going down to the first one. Is there any stops along the way? No, there is not, because you can't stop in the middle of a, sub of a shell. So in this one, there's only one wavelength, because you can only go from 2 to 1. So this would be one wavelength. Or one, you know, lambda. So now, how many different wavelengths? Well, there was three when we did 4 to 1. There was two when we did three to one, and there was only one from two to one. So three plus two plus one, there's a total of six different wavelengths. And they all correspond with six different energy amounts. Yeah? Okie dokie. Now let's move on to B. So B says, calculate the lowest and highest energies of light produced by the transitions described in part A. So out of these six different examples, right, if I just said one, two, three, four, five, and six, one is going to be the lowest amount of energy, while the other one is going to be the highest amount. The highest would make, would, it might be the easiest for you to understand the highest. The highest energy would be the biggest jump. 
So out of all of these, which one is the biggest jump? Oh, it was from four to one. So from four to one, that would be the highest energy. Okay, now we just got to figure out what the lowest jump is. Or, well, I kind of just said it, but the, the lowest energy, right? The lowest energy is the lowest jump. However, which one is it, right? Is it from two to one? Because that's a jump of just one shell. Is it four to three? That's just a jump of one shell. Or is it three to two? It always is also from the highest number as well. If you found out the energies from four to three, three to two, and two to one, you would find out that four to three is actually the lowest one out of those three. So just know it's the lowest jump, but it's starting, starting with the highest number. All right. So four to one was the highest. Four to three is the lowest. Yeah. Now we just got to find the actual energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this because we kind of figured out everything that we needed to know from the diagram. We don't need the diagram anymore. Actually, if I can just go like this, maybe I can grab it all in one shot. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to reiterate here. This is for letter B. And we just found out that four to one was the highest. And four to three was the lowest. So that means that this was n equals four, drop down to n equals one, and then this is n equals four, drop down to n equals three. So with both of these, they're talking about hydrogen and we're jumping shells. So there's only one formula that you guys know for hydrogen, the Bohr model, and jumping shells. What do you think it is? It is delta E equals K, one over N squared one minus one over N squared two, right? This one is the initial, and the two is represented as the final. And K, we guys should know this, right? K is that constant number, which is uh, 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So now all we got to do is just plug in the numbers for the highest and the lowest and then box those answers off. So let's get to it. So for 4 to 1, it would be delta E, the change in energy, equals... 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times 1 over 4 squared, because 4 was the initial, minus 1 over 1 squared. So this would be basically delta E equals 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times 1 over 16 minus 1, because 1 over 1 squared is just 1, and then you can plug this into the calculator. So we have this as being 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times 1 divided by, actually I could do that in parentheses, 1 divided by 16 minus 1. We get negative 2.04 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And remember, the negative is just signifying that the energy is being released. And energy will always be released when you go from a higher shell, 4, to a lower shell of 1. So box this answer off. That would be the answer for the highest. Now just know that they say the word, calculate the lowest and highest energies of light produced. Now we've went over this concept a couple of times before in the other questions, but just know that the calculator doesn't understand the theory behind chemistry. This negative is just telling you that energy is being released. But when you're asking, whenever they say the word produced, when they're asking for just calculate the lowest and the highest energies produced, in this case, the highest energy would be 2.04 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. You don't take the negative. The negative is just telling you that the energy was being released, but how much energy was produced? 
2.04 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. You can never, ever, ever produce a negative amount of energy. The negative just tells you that it's being released. Now we just have to do the same thing for N4 all the way to 3. So delta E equals 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th, 1 over 4 squared minus 1 over 3 squared. So this would be delta E equals 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th, 1 over 16 minus 1 over 9. Plug that in and get your answer. So I'll put the answer over here. Delta E equals 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18 times parentheses 1 divided by 16 minus 1 divided by 9. And I get negative 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. The negative is just telling you that the energy was being released, but how much energy was produced? Just 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So the lowest energy was 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And you can see that this number, negative 19th, is lower than negative 18th. So we got it right. So A and B, oops, a and B are good. Now we just have to do letter C. They say calculate the frequencies and wavelengths of the light produced by the transitions described in part B. So once again, I'm just going to get rid of all this because now we are ready to do part C. Part C. We want frequencies and wavelengths, and now we have the energies. So, for your highest energy that was produced, which was from 4 all the way down to 1, we have an energy of 2.04 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. How do we find the frequency? Remember, a frequency is that V. What's the formula between energy and frequency? You guys should know, right? E equals HV, and H is a constant number. So H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative, oops, times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. That's Planck's constant. So all we got to do is just plug it in. So 2.04 times 10 to the negative 18th equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times the frequency divided by Planck's constant, 6.626. 6.6, let me just put that in there, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, divide, times 10 to the negative 34th. So your frequency for the highest energy is 2.04 times 10 to the negative 18th, divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. You get 1.35 times 10 to the negative 51. Oops, I actually did. See, I saw negative 51, and I knew something was wrong because frequencies should not be that small. I accidentally did times and not divide. So let me just plug this back in, and let me just press the divide. There we go. This is 3.5. Times 10 to the 15th. And that's cycles per second. So S to the minus 1. Or you can say hertz. So that's the answer to the first part. For the highest energy. Now we just have to find the wavelength. What's the formula between wavelength and frequency? Oh, C equals wavelength times frequency. And what's C? Speed of light. 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So... 2.998 times 10 to the 8th equals wavelength times this answer. 3.08 times 10 to the 15th. All divide by 3.08 times 10 to the 15th. And then you get your answer. Wavelength equals 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by 3. 
zero eight times ten to the fifteenth, and you get two point actually nine point seven three times ten to the negative eighth meters. So box these two answers off. These are the wavelengths and the frequencies for the highest energy. Now I just have to find the lowest, which is from 4 to 3, and that energy was 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So E equals HV, we can solve for the frequency, 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times frequency, divide by Planck's constant on both sides, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and then we can find our frequency. Frequency equals 1.06 times 10 to the negative 19th, divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and we get 1.60 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second, or you can say hertz, Box that answer off. That's the answer to the frequency for the lowest energy. And then, just like before, C equals wavelength times frequency. 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals wavelength times the frequency that we just found. 1.60 times 10 to the 14th divided by 1.60 times 10 to the 14th. And then that would be your answer. So cross that off. Wavelength equals, they didn't say to put it in nanometers, so we don't care. <laughs> we care, but, you know, not, not too much. 1.60 times 10 to the 14th, and we get 1.87. 1.87 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Box that answer off. That's the answer to the wavelength and the frequency for the lowest energy. And then everything is done for this question. Awesome job, guys. A lot of calculations here, but hey, we love math. We love to calculate stuff. At least I do. What do you guys think? Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for coming here for help with your OpenStax Chemistry Adam's First textbook. It's been awesome so far. Let's keep moving. Study hard, guys, and I will see you in the next question. Take care.